In today's episode of IRS Tax News, IRS Security Summit renews warning for tax pros to guard against identity theft amid continued threats. The Security Summit, like the new Justice League, Truth, Justice, the American Way Trimes, come to save the world by providing a strong warning to be careful out there. Be careful out there because there's bad guys. Honestly, this new Justice League doesn't make me feel quite as secure as the old one. Justice League is gone. Is Superman on this new Justice League? No, his son runs it now, huh? That kid's one apple that fell way off the tree. And he's got a whole new approach? Claims he doesn't even need his superpowers? Because the best approach is just to let the poor downtrodden criminals do whatever they want and focus their time and energy warning the non-criminals to be careful of the criminals. Stay safe. Stay alert. And he thinks his dad's an idiot that ruined the world. You're an idiot. I'm an idiot. Well, that's great. Uh, we appreciate the warning. Anyways, IR 2022-135, July 12, 2022, Washington. As the battle continues against tax-related identity theft, the IRS state tax agencies and tax industry renewed their call and they did so with like that bat signal at the middle of the night, but no one responded. So now they put it on their website and I'm, I'm reading it to you now. So this is their call. They renewed their call for tax professionals to be on guard against new and ongoing threats involving their systems and taxpayer data. So this effort begins next week with the Security Summit's annual summer campaign focused on tax professionals and taking fundamental steps to stop data theft from their offices. This is the seventh year that the Security Summit partners, the IRS, state tax agencies, and the nation's tax community have worked to raise awareness about these issues through the quote, protect yourself, protect, protect your clients, protect yourself, end quote, campaign, because the Justice League isn't gonna do it for you anymore. So that's a, you got a relevant quote here. Protect your clients, protect yourself. The special five-part news release series will begin July 19th and run every Tuesday through August 16th, which coincides with the dates uh, for this year's IRS Nationwide Tax Forum. The forum will feature 32 webinars to help educate the tax professional community and several <clears throat> involve security-related features. This Thursday, July 14th, is the last day for tax professionals to register to attend and have access to all 32 webinars. Holy moly, you better jump jump on that one right here, right now. That's why we're bringing you this kind of news so you can act fast. For more information to register, you can visit IRS Nationwide Tax Forum. There's a link to that here. Quote, the IRS and the Security Summit partners continue to advance their shared efforts to protect the federal and state tax system from identity thieves, end quote, said IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick. So that's what they're doing here. They're giving us that firm warning uh, to be careful because there's bad guys quote as we've increased our defense uh, cyber thieves increasingly turn tax professionals especially smaller operations to look for secure security vulnerabilities this is a critical link to protecting sensitive taxpayer information by taking some basic security step tax pros help protect against the relentless efforts of identity thieves end quote so those dang tax people always going after the tax professional, those thieves always going after the tax professionals who are, of course, the salt of the earth, you know, like they like making the world go round and these people targeting. It's just it's ridiculous. Any case, the summer's effort focuses on a reminder for tax pros to focus on fundamentals and watch out for emerging vulnerabilities being seen for those practitioners using cloud-based services for their practice. So I would think this would typically be the case now, you know, if you have the tax software, some of the tax software you actually download on your computer and you still have to log in oftentimes with, with like online logins and so on. But other softwares these days are actually cloud-based, meaning you log on to the internet to log on to the software, which could be beneficial to some taxpayers, especially if you're in an office that's decentralized and different people possibly can access the cloud. But that clearly may then give access, uh, more easy access if you're not careful, if you don't have the proper internal controls in place to have uh, cyber criminals, you know, take uh, log into those 
those accounts and actually file tax returns from the cloud, which you would think would be harder to do if the if the uh, actual software was on a hard drive or on you know not on basically the cloud. Although they could still do it, they could try to take advantage. They could try to take control of the computer, but uh, <clears throat> you would you would assume that that would be a harder thing to do. So. In any case, identity thieves were especially active this past year as they continued to use pandemic nationwide teleworking practices and other events as predatory tactics for a variety of scams. Those dang predators. Tax professionals are prime targets for criminal syndicates that are both tech and tax savvy and well funded. These scammers either trick or hack their way into tax professionals' computer systems to access client data. How dare they attacking tax people? The salt of the earth for crying out loud. Someone, where's the ju something needs to be done. Ah, anyway, even when tax pros think they have client data stored in a secure cloud, lock, um, lack of strong auth authentication can make this information vulnerable. Thieves can use stolen data to file fraudulent tax returns to make it more difficult for the IRS and the states to detect because the fraudulent returns use real financial information. So clearly this is becoming more and more relevant as basically we have more of these kind of refundable credits and we're using the tax code more as kind of a, a welfare program to some degree as opposed to a tax collection or simply or only kind of a tax collection type of thing that means that the lower income tax returns the ones that were typically you would think be easier to file are becoming more and more valuable which actually uh sadly leads to targeting you would think of lower income individuals and tax professionals who are trying to do tax services for lower income uh, individuals whose profit margins are probably quite lean in the first place uh, and are probably trying to make money through bulk doing a lot of a lot of tax returns. So I would think that, you know, that's part of the issue of high, the higher end tax professionals are probably making a good bigger profit margin, possibly at larger firms and possibly uh, then able to have the larger, you know, data protection, hire someone to actually handle this stuff, which is, but in any case, so other data thieves sell the basic tax preparer or taxpayer information on the web so other fraudsters can try filing fraudulent returns. So they could try to sell the information or file the, the return themselves. In any case, you know, now the information's on the web and once all the social security numbers and all that stuff is out there, which for many people it probably is, given the fact that we've had the same social security numbers our whole lives and had to give them to every financial institution, then uh, you know it's more likely that this kind of fraud stuff can take place and someone filing a fraudulent tax return or unemployment compensation filing or in some kind of crazy stuff. So the Security Summit, there's a link to that here, formed in 2015 to join the fight against identity theft. The, the summit partners made great inroads against tax-related identity theft, dramatically reducing confirmed identity theft returns and saving billions in tax dollars. During the next five weeks, the Security Summit partners will highlight a series of simple actions that tax professionals can take to better protect their clients and themselves from sensitive data theft. Taking these steps now will help ensure that the progress in tax-related identity theft that started in 2015 continues. Highlighted recommendations will be to sign up clients for identity protection pins. Now, this is something, uh, like I said, the social security numbers are are uh, something that's are kind of getting antiquated at this point. And I'm not kind of, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what the fix is. I don't think a, a chip in your forehead is a good idea or anything like that. But, but you would think if you have the same number your entire life and now we've got the internet, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have, you know, it didn't seem like your social security number can go viral or something. So, and now obviously once it's out there, it's gonna be out there. So you would think that if, if they rotate the security numbers, the social security number in some way, that uh, would make something, make it a little bit better in some cases, although that would cause problems because now you've got different numbers you got to deal with and so on. But uh, uh, on the IRS side, you might be able to use this pen thing, which was used before when people, someone took their identity and filed a fraudulent return, and then they gave them this pen, which is basically like a second number, like a social security number, which they say they change yearly. So now you can try to uh, ask clients to do that upfront, to do that at the starting point, 
so that uh, so that they're protected uh, and and are less likely to have someone file a fraudulent return because if they do that, it becomes a big hassle to deal with. So you got you either deal with a pin, which which might give you some security, some insurance against that, or you know if you get a, if you get an actual identity theft thing, then you got to deal with actually telling the IRS that wasn't actually me. You sent the return to the wrong person and that kind of stuff. So the IRS now offers IPPINs to all taxpayers who can verify their uh, identities online on the phone with an IRS employee after filing a form 15227 or in person. The IPPIN is a six digit number that is known only to taxpayer and the IRS. It helps prevent an identity thief from filing a fraudulent return in the taxpayer's name. Tax professionals cannot obtain an IPPIN for their client. Clients must verify their identities to the IRS. So you can't like say taxpayer, just give me, go get me a, get me one. You know, you got to set it up because it's kind of like the IRS's second social security number in essence for, uh, for you. So the easiest way uh, is at the get an IPPIN tool on irs.gov. There's a link to that here. The IRS Electronic Tax Administration Advisory Committee, there's a link to that here, recently described the IPPIN as, quote, the number one security tool uh, currently available to taxpayers from the IRS. This tool is the key to making it more difficult for criminals to file false tax returns in the name of taxpayers, end quote. So that doesn't mean they can't do other malicious stuff like file for unemployment or something like that if they steal your credentials and whatnot. But at least you'll save yourself some time on the social on the on the IRS side of things. And if you're a tax pro, then you might want to, to advise clients of that because that could save times on both sides, possibly. So avoid spear phishing scams, those dang spear phishing people going around taking out tax professionals with spears what are they thinking so one of the most successful tactics tactics used by identity thieves against tax professionals is to spear phishing scam so thieves uh, take time to craft professional emails to entice tax professionals to open a link embedded in the email or open an attachment so obviously as tax professionals we're looking for new clients and whatnot so you would think most of these spear phishing scams are kind of like uh, shotgun stuff where they send emails to everyone and they're clearly spam but if they target someone individually they can be much more uh sophisticated so it's not like these people are idiots when they're doing the when they're doing the shotgun approach they have a method that's why they're doing the shotgun approach that's why it looks corny and whatnot because they're probably have to you know they're doing lead generation basically so but if they're but you know if they're targeting a higher target one they can then they can try to impersonate a client and and make it look a lot more legitimate and of course you might have multiple emails with them before they actually uh do do the scamming thing to have you click on something that would download something so it's so it is what it is so tax pros have been especially vulnerable to spear phishing scams from thieves posing as potential clients uh, thieves might carry on an email conversation with their target for several days before sending the email containing a link or attachment. So the link or attachment may secretly download software into the tax pro's computer uh, that will give thieves remote access to the tax professional system. So that's scary stuff. It's like a ghost in your computer. There's a ghost in my computer. I wish it was a ghost. No, it's a dang spare fisher. Anyways. Know the tell sign, the telltale signs of identity theft. Many tax professionals who report data theft to the IRS also say that they were unaware of the signs that a theft had occurred. There are like if your mouse is moving around <laughs> and like screens are popping. If someone sign, if you watch like a ghost sign into your tax software, uh, you know when you didn't touch the mouse. That's a sign. That's a sign. Be careful. So there are many signs that tax pros should watch out for. These include multiple clients suddenly receiving IRS letters requesting confirmations that they filed a tax return that deems suspicious. So if you get letters from the like client letters saying that something happened that you didn't do, then someone else might be doing something funny. So it might not just be the IRS just spit out a weird letter, right? So you want to look into it. So tax professionals may see e-file acknowledgments for far more tax returns than they filed. So if, if you're looking at acknowledgements, you're saying, I didn't file 500 tax returns this year. I only did like 10 or something. Then, you know, it's a sign. There's a sign there, people. Uh, computer cursors may move seemingly on their own. Again, that last one kind of cracks me up. That one, yeah, I have, 
I had no idea that was a, my software. I thought there was a ghost doing my tax return work for me and just signed into my software. Anyways, create a security plan. Not only is it a good practice, the IRS also reminds tax professionals that federal law enforced by the Federal Tax Trade Commission requires paid tax return preparers to create and implement a data security plan. An information security plan protects the business and client information while also providing a blueprint for action in the event of a security breach. For many tax professionals, knowing where to start when developing a written security plan presents challenges. There are resources available to assist like the IRS publication 4557 Safeguarding Tax Data there's a link to that here. Other resources to help tax pros will be highlighted in an upcoming news release. So look forward to that. We'll be here reading that news release like always. It's going to be great. I can't wait. My seat, I'm on the edge of it. My seat's on the edge. I'm not even using the back, the back stop because I'm on, the, I'm on the front edge of it, of my seat. Help client protect themselves whether working from home or traveling. With the continuation of work from home policies for many organizations, taxpayers may find themselves conducting their affairs, whether personal, business, or financial, in a different way. Tax pros can help their clients protect themselves by sharing key bits of information on computer security. These cyber smart tactics protect not only the tax professional, but their client alike. So we got those to look forward to. This summer series runs for five weeks and coincides with the annual IRS nationwide forum, uh, which are being held virtually. So it's a virtual forum still beginning July 19th. Everything's virtual now. It doesn't matter. COVID's done, but it's all virtual still. So the forums uh, are featured. Well, I don't know if COVID's done, whatever. It's virtual. <laughs> so the forums feature three webinars focused on cyber and information security that will live streamed as follows. So we got the cyber security for tax professionals advanced uh, session uh, presented by the American Coalition for Taxpayer Rights. That's July 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Deeper dive into emerging, uh, emerging cyber crimes and crypto tax compliance. That's an interesting one. July 26th uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time helping you and your your clients steer clear of fraud and scams presented by the treasury inspector general for tax administration august 2nd at 11 a.m eastern time for more information about the irs nationwide tax forums and to register visit irs nationwide tax forums and there's a link to that here there'll be a link to this in the description